I'm not saying to baby your animals. I'm not saying to make it to where that they live in a plush environment. What I am saying is that the sheep that you see on this farm are employees, essentially. I want to treat them well for a couple of reasons. One, the better they're treated and the healthier they are, the better lambs that they will produce. Also, the healthier they are, the less medicine that I'm going to buy to treat them for any other issues that they may have. It also means that it's less time that her or I are going to spend trying to catch an animal, then doctor the animal, maybe have to put it up here in the pens to watch it, so now it's taking up a lambing pen that I may or may not need. Lots of benefits to ensuring that your animals are taken care of. Again, they're not pets. These animals are raised on our farm for meat. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. It has been two weeks, and that means it's time to clean that barn out again and put fresh bedding down. The uh, significant part about today is that this will be the last time we have to clean the barn out this spring, or this lambing season, basically. They get kicked out March 15th, and we don't put them back in the barn until December 15th, roughly. So like I said, nine month break, of not having to clean the barn, not having to feed every day, stuff like that is pretty nice. I'm happy about it. First, we gotta, we gotta go ahead and fuel up the skid steer. She's almost out. And uh, we'll get started cleaning that barn out. Just like a tractor, the skid steer don't run on hopes and dreams either. All filled up. We are going to get to test a couple of things today. So, if you'll remember a few videos back, you all bought us some quick attach conversions. We welded up a quick attach conversion for this 8030 behind me. We really appreciate that. Your viewership does make my life easier. Now, the same bucket that used to go on this 8030 behind me, I can put on my on the skid steer right here, which makes it much quicker for me to clean, hopefully. That's what I'm assuming because it's a much bigger bucket. I can get a lot more in one scoop as far as loading the manure spreader. And I can also scrape a wider path at the same time when I'm going through the barn. So you'll get to see that today. What you're not gonna see in this video is how we actually haul the sawdust. We get this sawdust from a local sawmill and it costs us, for a three cubic yard bucket, costs us 10 bucks. It takes us three, we'll say four, because I'd probably put a little more than three in there, about four three cubic yard buckets in order to bed our entire barn with a at least two inch thick layer, if not three-ish inches around the edges. So at that rate, $40 gives me bedding for about two weeks and stays clean and does a good job of keeping all that manure and urine away from the animals. They dump it in here. This all gets covered up with a tarp so when we drive back it's not blowing off. And then we take the skid steer right here, come up here and grab a scoop and take it in there. Or sometimes we back the trailer in there, it just depends. Today we have more people so we're probably not going to back the trailer in there. We're just going to go in there with the buckets of it. And make it. You guys hear that knocking? That's the lambs basically complaining that their creep feeder is empty. What are you two doing? Yeah, what are you doing? So kind of a fun fact for you, I guess. This is actually about three weeks worth of manure because I had to go somewhere for work and wasn't able to do it last week. As you may or may not be able to tell, as you walk through here, they have wasted a bunch of hay. I'm not sure why, and how they got to it. So these guys are gonna get kicked out. And uh, while they're kicked out, we will scrape our floors. The reason they're kicked out, I'm sorry, mama. Whoops. 
Well, we're gonna have to. We'll have to put you two in a pen. You're a first-time mama. I know you are. Yeah. What number are you? You're doing good, mama. You're doing good. I'm not bothering you. We're gonna give them a minute. Hey, shut that machine off. Shut the machine off. That's gonna put a just a small damper. Not a not a big deal. It happened. 85. You look very comfy. If I bother you, oh, of course. They're comfy until you touch them, and they're not so comfy anymore. So we do have some late bloomers. Not so much late bloomers. The ones that you just seen, like that one that just gave birth. She's a yearling, so last January is when she, well, last lambing season, so December through, say, February, or maybe even March if she was a late one. I have to look at her number. She was born. Unfortunately, because of the way that the majority of our flock cycle is, the older ones typically lamb or get pregnant in late July, early August, because it's the longest days of the year. And that's kind of what drives their breeding cycle. Rams are left in with them year round, and that's just kind of what essentially induces it is just the day cycle. They always have a ram with them. I know some people are going to be like, oh, well, you know, if you pull a ram out and you put it back in, you can, you can time it to where they'll uh, lamb all at the same time. Well, you probably can. I don't want to do that because dealing with a whole bunch of them puts me in a little bit of a bind. I only have three lambing pins, and at that point, putting up with, say, a hundred of them, lambing all within a week or two, it's guaranteed that those three pins are going to be full, and I'm not going to have anywhere to put them. That is why we let them breed naturally. We don't pull rams. We don't give hormones, anything like that, because we want them to breed on their own so that everybody's not giving birth the same day, the same week. Much, much more convenient for us. Now, if it works for your operation, that's good. I'm happy for you. If it's not work for us, you guys are not going out here. Not the way we generally do it. Typically, we take the baby and we drag it across the ground, and mom follows. However, like I said, yearling, first time mom, didn't quite understand that concept, so she didn't do that. But she realized it's her baby. She's letting it eat. She was just cleaning it. She's nervous because I keep looking at her. So we'll leave them alone. Unfortunately, they're going to have to stay pinned up in here, though, while we clean the barn. Um, we don't like letting newborns outside for a few reasons. But the bigger reason today is because it's slick and not ideal conditions, and that baby's going to get wet. snow at all it's solid matter of fact you can see where I drove the truck back there I barely sank in over here at all and that's just because it's getting warmer out now if you uh, look over here so our 20,000 pound tractor didn't even sink in you can just you can see where I was horsing around and gave it some throttle and it dug just a hair but for the most part this is all it did I don't even know if you can see it on the yeah you can see it I mean it's it's not dug in at all. Just a tiny little indention. That's it. So, good times. Like I said, we got like two inches of it. It's a lot. Kind of shows you a little bit of what we got. That's a good inch of it or so, and that's not really accurate because it's right up against the building. So we got a lot of it. Don't mind the fresh hay that we tipped over. We've done it before. I'm sure we'll do it again. So this was all in one of the hay racks and we tipped it on accident. 
So you can see on this floor, it's all back down to concrete right there. Yeah, there's a little bit of a stain essentially. But in the springtime, we actually power wash this whole thing out all the way down. That's why we have a slope to our floor. Makes it to where we clean this out. We don't have a bunch of flies or maggots or anything like that hanging out in here during the summer because I don't really care that they're in here during the summer because we're not in here a lot. We've opened the doors and kind of let everything air out. But whatever is in or on this floor when we put the next set of bedding down for them is going to live there and it stays warm in here. I can touch it. You've seen how much ice was outside on the ground, right? It was, I think the low last night was like 14. That ground is at least 50 or 60 degrees because it's maybe more because it's almost warm to a touch of my hands. My hands are not cold. So all this gets scraped out. This is pretty much what it looks like. Now we're going to talk more about the bedding that we actually put down and why it works so well. This is what I was hoping to show you. So this is the fresh sawdust that we just put down. And it's fresh from the mill. You can see that when I throw it around, there's no dust that comes off and goes into the air. So it has moisture in it. And if you really squeeze it hard, you can kind of compress it, but you'll never quite make it to where it, it's packed. Well, that does two things. One, if they step on it with their feet, their hooves, right? It's not gonna pack into their hooves. The other thing it does is, this is mud, not manure, just so nobody gets freaked out. If I drop this in here, right, and I just roll it around a little bit, you can see that it covers it just like that. That's awesome, because what it does is once it covers it, and it kind of traps that moisture inside of there, that makes it to where when all this manure starts piling up in the barn, it's not just everywhere, it's kind of contained. And you can see that even as I squeeze it and step on it, yeah, a little bit comes out, but then as soon as it gets just a little more on it, now it's back to the same point. So this hand has no mud on it, right? It's clean, it's got a little sawdust on it. So when I start squeezing it with this hand, very little mud is on that hand, and that's what we want. Whereas this hand that had it before the sawdust was on it, makes it to where as they're walking around, it's not getting packed in their hooves, it's not getting all over their fur. That is exactly what we want it to do, and it does it well. Now I say that using sawdust is an excellent choice, except if you're using dry sawdust. So now this sawdust, we actually had from a couple loads ago because I wanted to make it dried out good. You know, so like if it was actually like kiln dried kind of. Just tell them it's a big litter box. That's all it is. It's right. exactly what we're making. It's a big litter box. There's some frozen chunks in here. She's not enjoying it. It doesn't feel good, and it doesn't it doesn't feel good at all. Whatever it goes I, I feel like lungs. I needed some safety goggles for that. Industry. Might have. The other thing I can show you is if I throw this up in the air like that, you see all the particles that are still flying through the air right there. That's why. Bring some in. You don't want dry sawdust. That's exactly why. So even though you can get shavings, pine shavings from. Uh, there's all kinds of companies that do it. Put it in chicken coops and stuff like that. Pine does have that oil in it, which kind of makes it an antibody. However, if it's dry like that, it's gonna cause respiratory issues. Straw, even though it is dry, it is dusty dry. Just like if I were to take some hay off of there and shake it around, there's a bunch of dust that comes out of it. So for a vent, or for a, a barn like this that does not have ventilation, other than simply you know, it's not sealed up, there's no insulation there. It can breathe through the roof, through the ridge. It can breathe through the ridge of the roof, and obviously when we open the doors, you can see that it's not perfectly sealed. Well, when we shut the door and latch it, then it's a little more sealed, but still. Overall, it is not sealed, and it does not have ventilation as far as fans. That's why we don't want any of that dust in here. I'm not saying that sawdust is the only answer. I'm saying that it is the right answer for our operation. If you have different barns or if you have ventilation in your barns, then sawdust 
might still work well, but it doesn't mean that you have to use sawdust. You have ventilation that makes it where you can use straw and it can be a dusty, a little bit of a dusty environment because the fans are moving air and it's not stagnant. That is the difference. So I hope that these are kind of showing you a good indication of what the pros to sawdust is, but also what the cons are. You know, the cons are that it is sawdust and it sucks when it gets into the machines, kind of like sand, but not quite as bad. Won't tear up bearings like sand will. But it, the pros are, like when you put it on here right, this is roughly about two inches, might be a little more, but overall it's two inches worth. And if I drop down to my knees, it doesn't hurt. And it shouldn't, because these guys don't have padding other than, you know, their tissue that's on their bones. So when they're dropping down like that, because the moms will go down like this and then they'll lay down, right? You don't want concrete scraping against your knees or in their case, you know, your knees or your, you know the elbows that they have. It just doesn't feel good. Let alone when they're sitting on their side or kind of laying on their side a little bit to relax at night. It probably doesn't feel good either. The other thing is this is a barrier. It's a very good insulation. So while this concrete probably saw when we scraped all of it off. This concrete is showing that it has a lot of heat in it because when you scrape it off you see some steam coming off because the air outside is cooler than what that concrete is. That's good. We want that concrete to stay warm. However, I still want a barrier to make sure that let's say it's cold for weeks on end and it starts cooling the ground down so much and even the concrete underneath that I don't want them to be cool. I'm not saying to baby your animals. I'm not saying to make it to where that they live in a plush environment. What I am saying is that the sheep that you see on this farm are employees, essentially. I want to treat them well for a couple of reasons. One, the better they're treated and the healthier they are, the better lambs that they will produce. Also, the healthier they are, the less medicine that I'm going to buy to treat them for any other issues that they may have. It also means that it's less time that her or I are going to spend trying to catch an animal then doctor the animal, maybe have to put it up here in the pens to watch it, so now it's taking up a lambing pen that I may or may not need. Lots of benefits to ensuring that your animals are taken care of. Again, they're not pets. These animals are raised on our farm for meat. There's nothing wrong with that. That's, some people eat lamb, some people eat deer, some people eat beef, turkey, pork, all kinds of different things. Some people eat tofu. I won't eat it, but other people do. That is just how this operation works. If I get some footage of Caden loading me up, this will be the last. Very uh, close. The, you're combing the sawdust? You looked like you were dead. Sorry. Fun fact, so if you didn't know what a frozen egg looks like and you throw it at somebody. So Chrissy threw it at me and I dropped it. Obviously it hit the ground like this. That's kind of impressive. You can really hurt somebody with that. You shouldn't be throwing eggs around to poke somebody's eye out. Oh, it was already. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh. Kind of cool looking though.
It's true. This is. Well, this, I'm gonna something. <laughs> this is definitely safer. <laughs> You see Chrissy and Caden just kind of spreading it out a little bit. It doesn't really need to be done a whole lot just because when they walk in, they're going to kick it around, spread it. We're not too worried about that. But like I said earlier, when I mentioned about making sure it's at least thick enough so when you lay down, it's not going to hurt you. We do make it thicker around the outside, so like along this wall behind me. And then same thing on this side along that wall. Mainly because that's where everybody lays. And then up here by the uh, shoot feeder, and by the, these lambing pens. Nobody really lays over here because the water's there. Nobody lays there because that's where the mineral feeder's at. So we just want to make sure that wherever they're going to lay or the areas that we see them lay the most, we want to make sure there's plenty of good thick bedding. Around the hay feeders, in general, we don't put very thick bedding because they're going to pull some hay through there. They're going to have a little residue that gets down there. And it's just kind of built in that they're going to add to it. We don't have to worry in there. Let's go ahead and bring these guys back in. Now he's not going to beat on it. Good thing owe you money? Yeah. 